Hi everybody. Hello there. I'm Jerry. And I'm Linda. We're the newcomers. Today it's time again for Mailbag Monday. And we've had a good week, a busy week. They're all busy. They're all busy. Every week's busy and we like it that way. You see her new hair? Yeah. Got new hair, do you? It's a little bit darker, I think, this time. I think the dye was sat on there just a little longer. But anyway. Yeah, and we had a contest this past week. Some of you participated, and mm -hmm. we'll talk about that. And? Our villagers snooty. Uh, I hope not. And Camp Villages is coming up. Golfers are singing the blues. All that and more. Hit it, Wally. Send us your questions. We've got your answers. Cherry and Linda's Mailbag Monday. Let's start off with our video question. This one is from Scott. Hi, Jerry and Linda. Scott Weaver again. I have a question for you. We bought a courtyard villa, and I'm just curious, uh, in five or six years or even longer than that, who's going to maintain the wall I'm painting and the six-foot privacy fence? Can you let me know? Thank you. Scott, that's a good question, and we've had that come up before. Yeah. There are lots of instances here in the villages where you will share a wall with a neighbor, mm -hmm. or maybe with uh, the entrance to a village. Right. right. You know, one side of the wall you look at, the other side is what the public looks at. Yeah. So we didn't know the answer. We, we suspected the answer. So we reached out to somebody that did know, and they sent me an answer that says, the way it is written in the deeds... The interior side of the wall or fence is maintained by the owner. Mm -hmm. And of course, you don't have free reign to do anything you like on that wall. It's within standards, so uh, check with your deed restrictions or, or call the deed compliance office and find out what you can do. Mm -hmm. But it's unfortunately your responsibility. And thanks, Scott, for the question. Anybody else that has one, send it in to villagesnewcomers at gmail.com. Just make sure you shoot it in a Landscape, landscape format, not the vertical format, landscape. And Scott, you did a great job. Thank you very much. Celtic or Celtic? That's the question from last week. We had a lot of you write in. Thank you so much. You know what? We learn a lot from you guys. And thank you for sending in uh, the scoop so we can, yeah. we can decide. What we found out is that both are common usage. In Ireland, where it was, you know, the real deal, it's Celtic. Celtic with a hard C or yeah, hard, yeah. Hard, and here it's commonly referred to as Celtic, but still the people with Irish backgrounds over here they call it Celtic as well. So either one's okay. Celtic is uh, more okay. It's more okay. Also, we want to talk about lithium batteries. You know that ignited a little firestorm. No pun intended. <laughs> no pun. Uh, the general consensus, and we called around again, and we investigated that are the name brand, good, well-manufactured batteries that are used the way the manufacturer intended mm -hmm. are very safe. When you have problems or when you have second-rate products yeah. and you don't read the manuals and you use a different charger, you right. overcharge, those kind of things. But even so, some of you said, why don't you call the fire department and find out? I did. And they have responded to lots of golf cart fires. The gentleman I talked to even went into the record books, and the ones that they had responded to were gas cart fires. So there you go. Whoa. Well, our first question here for me is from Mark and Jamie. We have three little dogs and would like to know if we can set up a portable dog fence in our backyard. And that's a no-no. Well, it, um, <laughs> Your backyard. Yeah. Your backyard is not usually visible from the street. Yeah. And the only ones that are going to see your backyard are probably your immediate neighbors. Yeah. And honestly, if they never complain, you will never have a problem. But if one of them does complain, then the deed compliance office will come out, take a look, and you very well could be made to move that. Yeah. But you said portable. And that's a whole different ball game yeah. because portable... You can run out there and bring it in anytime or take it apart and put it away. Yeah. So I don't see a big issue with that. But if you get a neighbor that doesn't like to look at it, and who would really? Who would want to look at that? Well, the only other problem, too, is if you have a little dog in that portable area, they're probably going to bark. And they're going to probably want to be out of that, and they're going to be barking. And that's going to cause a disturbance with the neighbors, I think. And don't forget there are predators here. Yeah. There are birds of prey like you would not believe. You have eagles and hawks and falcons. Mm -hmm. You know, they're here. Mm -hmm. 
and you have coyotes and bobcats. Yeah. They're here. Mm -hmm. And if you're out there with your dog, you know, you I don't really need the fence to, the, yeah. to be out there. But if you're not, your dog is probably in danger unless you've got, you know, a big one. Yeah. But uh, you keep that in mind. Your neighbors would have to initiate a complaint, and then you'd be forced to take it down. Yeah. Our next question is from Candy. Candy writes, I see online discussions about the villages, and it seems that the people that live around the village seem to think that everyone is snooty. Have you found that to be the case? I read the same things you read. Talk of the villages, next door, the villages news, and I see the things you're that you're referring to. I would, my own personal opinion, as everything is in our show, it's all our opinion. Whether it's about lithium batteries, you know, deed compliance, or legal matters, it's all our opinion. So do your own checking. But what we have found out is that in 90% of those cases or more, it's somebody that lives outside the village just making these accusations of snootiness. We don't see it. You know, we, we, we interact with probably more people than anybody oh you can gosh. think of. I work outside of the villages in Wildwood at Bargains and Blessings, and I talk to everyone that comes in that store. I don't, I don't feel like we are putting on airs of being snooty. I sure hope not. We don't think we're better than anybody no. else. Everybody's great. No. But people out there, for some reason, think that. And I don't know if it's jealousy or, or just no. a misconception or what it is. But no, these people here, and by the way, we're a city of 150,000 people. Yeah. You're going to have all kinds of people. You're going to have lovely, wonderful people. And every once in a while, you're going to run into somebody that's cantankerous. Yeah. You know, that's any neighborhood. That's any town. Yeah. You're, you're going to have them. So I would say maybe a lot of those people that, that post those kind of comments hang out in circles where you might meet more of the cantankerous ones. Mm -hmm. Well, apologize for any of those snooty people. I don't apologize for them because you got them <laughs> everywhere. you got them everywhere in the world. Well, that and is true. We're just like everywhere. But I really think the Villages has a lot of wonderful people. I, do, I agree so, with that. Candy, we are, what do the Mythbusters say? We're debunking that myth. <laughs> This is from Donna in Pennsylvania. I raise monarch butterflies. I'm concerned about all the pesticides being used. Do you know if anyone in the villages raises butterflies? Are there any groups I can join? And that is a yes. There are groups and clubs dedicated to butterflies, uh, growing them in your homes. Um, and I don't know what else they do with their club meetings, but there are clubs and butterflies around here. And it's great. Donna is quite the... Uh butterfly lover and you can see the pictures yeah. that are on here nice uh, of of these beautiful monarch butterflies and they're what is that a, a cocoon or a chrysalis yeah. and uh, mm -hmm. and they, oh it's just it's it's fun yeah. stuff we've known people that raise them here mm -hmm. as far as the pesticides there are lots of pesticides yeah. and they're they're needed and yeah. uh, i don't know they're not going to come and spray your lanai i think yeah. they'd be fine in your lanai when you let them go however they'd be subject to yeah. to anything else but we see butterflies here yeah we do and you know we see they've got other natural enemies here besides pesticides i mean these lizards are everywhere <laughs> and geckos birds. and lizards and, and birds, birds and mm -hmm. those big egrets man we see them poised for a long time yeah. just waiting to grab <laughs> anything wait. alive long time they wait don't they we're going to have more great questions and answers coming right up but first we're going to get some legal advice from our ask amy column and today you're going to hear from audra and I am an attorney at Pittman Law Office and we get a common question of clients coming in and saying well if I put my house in a trust do I have to ask my kids for approval if I want to sell the house in five years and the answer is no to at least the type of trust that we set up so we set up revocable trust which means that it is associated with the client's social security number and it also means that they lose no control over the asset until they pass away or if they became incapacitated so when you put your house into a revocable trust, you the client is named trustee and they can sell the house, no approval from any beneficiaries needed. Thank you, Audra. You know, I don't understand a lot of that legal mumbo jumbo, but lucky for us, they do. And uh, we appreciate them being on with us. Last week, we had a contest and a lot of you participated. We were on Facebook and we had a Facebook Live where we camped out. 
And uh, where did we go? We didn't have a tent. <laughs> no, no tent. <laughs> we went to Spanish Springs. And we sat around the fountain. And it was a beautiful day. Oh, my goodness. It was glorious. Uh, great temperature. And we sat on a bench right by the waterfall. And we waited. We sent out a clue. <laughs> the first clue was we drove past some cannons to get here. And if you pull into Spanish Springs from 441... You'll see that beautiful entrance, and they made it look all yeah. like a Spanish fort from the 1500s you might see over in yeah. St. Augustine, and there are cannons out front. And we set up right on the town square, right behind the waterfall. Mm -hmm. Our second clue was we could see a covered wagon from where we were. Mm -hmm. And there was a building behind us that was quite tall. Yeah, behind us yeah. was a Spanish architecture that yeah. gave that away. Gave it away. And our third, third thing was we could see Harold, yeah. but he couldn't see us. Because mm -hmm. he's a statue, yeah. and he was facing away from us. Yeah. And before too long, Peggy Beach came running up, and she said, I saw you when I got here. Yeah, she was excited. She was excited, and <laughs> she won the prize, which was a $40 gift certificate to Willie Jewel's Barbecue. They donated that, Willie Jewel's, and that's some good stuff down there. good stuff. We appreciate them, uh, them doing that. We like to have contests, and we'll have some more of them. Mm -hmm. But thanks to Peggy and all the other folks that showed up, only to find out that they were losers. <laughs> Our weather has been magnifique. Beautiful, wonderful, wonderful. Beautiful weather. But let's hear from Jeff Weimer. Hey, Jerry and Linda. The typical weather here in Wisconsin, it was a balmy 77 degrees yesterday. And today, it's 24 with high winds and snow. We definitely can't wait till we get there. Holy cow. <laughs> Could you imagine a 50 degree drop in one day? I wouldn't know what to wear. That would be a shock to your system. <laughs> it would be. Hey, a 10 degree drop is a shock to our system. Yeah, it here. is. <laughs> well, thank you, Jeff, for sending that in. Yes, that thank was you. Fun. Tea times have become a big topic here in the villages over the last month or so. Lots of grumbling. If you read the newspapers, you've seen it. Uh, if you looked online, you've probably seen it. People are saying the golf courses are in terrible shape. In fact, several articles I read recently said they're in the worst shape that these longtime residents, 15 years or more, have ever seen. And uh, that's a problem. Mm. Also, and we can vouch for this, we had a tea, we requested a tea time right. on Thursday, just like everybody does, ahead of time. We put it in the system, rejected, too full. No. Last week, we had uh, other friends rejected. And these rejections are coming more and more. And people are upset because, you know, when Harold Schwartz built the place, yeah. free golf for life. Well, we couldn't play this week. Our buddy couldn't play last week. You know, it's it's a little, uh, you know, disheartening because we had not played for a couple weeks, so we, we were ready to go. Yeah. We had zero points on the system, and we still couldn't get a tee down. Yeah, that, I think that's a problem. And when you want to golf, you go, okay, how many points do you have? Or how many points do you have? Because if you don't have very many points, you may – you probably will get a tea time. But if you've golfed more than three or four times in a week, it's going to put a damper on your day when you don't get your That's right. your friends to go with you and they don't have any points. There were four of us on the reservation and the other two did have some points. Yeah. And so they took take that into account. But we had zero. The whole thing is designed that the less you play, the greater your chance of playing. Yeah. But we hadn't played at all and we didn't get to play. Nope. So that's not very good. No. Nope. Yeah. Yeah. Well, better luck next week. Yeah, and people are concerned that, well, let's look at, you know, Dabney and Newell and yeah. all of those neighborhoods down south, Citrus Grove and St. Catherine and <clears throat> all those places have added homes, thousands of homes with no new executive courses. And that's where you play the free golf. So there's a lot of grumbling going on and we hope they get that straightened out. But the only way to straighten it out is to prov provide places for people to play. And we agree that these courses are way uh, overplayed right now, and mm -hmm. they're suffering. And then you get people complaining about the conditions, and uh, there's no easy answer other than to build some more executive, executive golf courses yeah. and spread out that play. Yeah. Right now, you got, everybody's competing for uh, uh, this many tee times, and it's not working. Yeah. Our next question is from Susan. Can you please talk about the camp for grandchildren? This really interests me in a big, in a big way. It's a big perk, she says. 
Absolutely. Yeah. And we've kind of been holding this story because last year, two friends of ours, Rodney and Jackie Schilling, they live up in Orange Blossom. They went to Camp Villages with their granddaughter, mm -hmm. and they did a little story for us. And we're not going to present that for you here. You can see some of the pictures, but after the end of this show, you're going to get a prompt, and you can watch that show about Camp Villages. So please, click on that link at the very end of this show, and it'll take you right into Rodney and Jackie telling you about their experience at Camp Villages. The Villages produces these weeks of fun for grandparents and their grandchildren. And they're having one coming up for Easter. Yeah. It's called Grab Your Peeps for Camp Villages Easter Week. <laughs> and uh, there is information online. You can go see that. But registration starts on March 7th. Mm -hmm. You don't want to miss that registration date because they fill up fast. Yeah. It's a great event for you, grandparents and grandchildren. So I got a tip on that. Um, that's in three days. And the first year, I tried to get my grandchildren in. And I went to uh, one of the regional wrecks and got there super, super early, like 6.30 in the morning, and almost camped out because there was going to be a line of people to try to sign their grandchildren up. It's hard to do it that way. It's easier to do it online. So a lot of people were in the long line and starting working on their computer. So that's the easiest way is to do it online. But you've got to do it right away because the first day it's open, you're going to get, they're, they're going to fill up. They're going to fill up. Some of the things I see here are spring sand crafts, bunny bingo, <laughs> little chicks and bunnies, disc golf, spring carnival, Golf car scavenger hunt. I did that with the grandkids a couple of years they ago. A lot that. of fun. Mm -hmm. uh, Do-it-yourself Easter decor and some other things. So an Easter egg hunt and uh, you'll have a lot of fun. Yeah. But if you don't sign up on March 7th, you may be out of luck. Out of luck. Maureen Lorkey from Columbia Station, Ohio, has a question about water aerobics. I know Linda has said when the, it's the busy season, you have to get to the rec center early to participate in some activities. What is that process? Do you go to the rec center and give your name to somebody at the desk, or do you have to stand in a line? She had a great question. Now she says, I'm wondering if you can check in and then go sit somewhere and read or socialize. Uh, you don't check in inside, you check in outside. You, most of the people will uh, form a line outside. If there's a class going on, then, then usually you will have to meet the attendant outside of the rec center. They'll take your number, uh, your ID, and then you'll stand in line. <coughs> and Or else, you know, you know where you, you've been checked in, you can go sit in your golf cart. So they'll give you a little ticket, whatever. But uh, How long will you stand in line? Um, uh, could be 15, 15, 20 minutes. Okay, well, that's not too bad. Longer. I'm not a good stander in line <laughs> no, person. No, no. He is not. Can you do it for a friend if you go up and get yours for you and Susie? Uh, not really. No, nope, you've got to be in person. You've okay. got to be in person. Yep. All right. Yep. yep. Well, thank you for that question, Maureen. Uh, I know it's a lot of fun. I'll never know for sure, though, because I'm not going to go to water aerobics. But You the, should. It is a blast, thing, and we do have men in the class. So uh, Water in those sports pools is only like up to here on me. That's not yeah. – I, I need it like up to here. That's where I want it. That's where you want yeah, it. That's where I want it. Deep, deep water. Yeah, deep water. Deep water. All right. Nudie. We're not going to have any bloopers today. <laughs> Every day is a blooper. Cut my head off, isn't it? Yeah, well, I'm gonna, I need to turn. What did I say, Celtic? Uh huh. No, that's yeah. wrong. That's what you call a blooper. That's a blooper. Okay. I don't want any bloopers today. We're gonna. Hey, how about we got to do better. Did we get a degree in this? No. <laughs> <Click>. <laughs> Sorry. Barbecue sauce. I had some barbecue sauce in it. Got sugar in it. <laughs> We're only 30 seconds in and we've already had five bloopers. We aren't professionals, Jerry. My mouth is really dry. I'm going to go, go, go.
it's time for entertainment in the villages. And there's quite a bit of entertainment every single night. So this coming up week at the Savannah Center, starting tomorrow, um, actually Wednesday, I'm sorry. Wednesday is crazy little thing called love. Now this is the village's hometown band uh, having love songs from Hollywood to Broadway. And that's great. Um, and that's at seven o'clock on Wednesday. And then at the Sharon this week, the Righteous Brothers are here. <laughs> and that's on Wednesday also. The Beach Boys is on Thursday this week at 4 o'clock and at 7. We went to one of their concerts, and it was a lot of fun way back when, didn't we, Jerry? Mm -hmm. And then um, this Friday is Jazz at Lincoln Center presents Sing and Swing. A lot of jazz going on. All right. Yeah. Time for Out and About. Brownwood Paddock Square was rocking last week when we did our out and about. It was the Strawberry Festival. What an event that was. That was a lot of fun. We met a lot of people. Oh, my goodness, we did. Jerry. Oh, Jerry and, uh, Jerry and Linda. Jerry and Linda. Jerry, your picture. Hi, everybody. Hi, it's Jerry and Linda. What are you doing? Are you belly dancing? Belly dancing at the square. You look fantastic. Oh, you look fantastic, too. You're here, both of you. Yeah, we watched all your videos. Well, no, thank you very I much. Wonderful. Yeah, just do your hip. Just do your hip. When's your show? Five minutes. Five minutes, all right. Well, don't break a leg. We saw you. You're crazy. Well, thank you very much. What's your name? Sue. Sue? Yes. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Yeah, I mean, I think we mentioned this last week because we had seen it at that point. Yeah. The stilt walkers, the clowns, yeah. the, the the food, the people carrying giant crates of strawberries yeah, around. It was wonderful. Yeah, it was cool. But we took the opportunity to join in the fun a little bit, and we grabbed a table at Bluefin right out on the square. Yeah, right. It's a the really edge. neat place to sit and have lunch and watch all the, the people walk by. You know, yeah, it was really cool. Yeah, yeah. We had a great view, and we saw all those guys on stilts mm -hmm. coming by and the beautiful girls uh, mm -hmm. with their uh, costumes and yeah what we, we saw the twirlers we talked uh, belly dancers belly dancers we saw hula dancers it's we saw cool. twirlers it was a lot of fun. yeah a lot of great people parking was really iffy mm -hmm. i'm going to give you a pointer if you live in the villages and you want to go to something like mardi gras or strawberry festival or something like that take your golf cart yeah you can often find a golf cart spot much 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 easier than a car spot yeah if you don't find a car spot, you'll have to park behind the building. Mm -hmm. But on this particular day, it was mm -hmm. very full. Yeah, very full. But we, like I said, we were lucky. And we went to Bluefin. I know we've already done a review of Bluefin, but I wanted to do this one again because it was so good. It was <laughs> so good. I had a build your own burger mm -hmm. and I ordered a cheeseburger and it came, it comes with seasoned fries. Mm -hmm. And we didn't get before pictures because I was so anxious to eat it. And I already cut it in half and grabbed a bite. We always cut our burger in half. For one thing, it's easier to handle. Yeah. And for two, if you get full, you can take the other half home and have a snack. Right. In fact, on this occasion, I took a half burger home and had it the next day. Mm -hmm. So anyway, but that burger was delicious. It was the kind of burger that's not at all tough. It's very, very good. Yeah. And the service super. at Bluefin is always good. The people are friendly. Yeah, our waitress was like Gabrielle, maybe. Oh, she was fabulous. I hope you get her. And Lynn at the desk, front desk, was so accommodating and so friendly. And we appreciate both of those girls. And even the manager came and talked to us. So we had a really good afternoon. Now, I you, had the Florentine cheeseburger. Right. And it was really good. It had span, uh, spinach on it and some... <laughs> <laughs> some uh, fried onions or whatever, some uh, sautéed sautéed onions. Uh -huh. It was wonderful, and the fries were seasoned fries, and they were good and crispy. It was a nice lunch, mm -hmm. and so many people yeah. stopped by to talk to us because we were right out there. Yeah, I'm estimating maybe 50 people came by to see us, and it was really good. We enjoyed yeah. it. Yeah. You know, you don't ever have to wonder it when we're out if you can say hello. You're always welcome always to say hello, welcome. and uh, it, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. In fact, I think we drew in enough business for Bluefin <laughs> unintentionally yeah. that the manager sent us out a key lime pie and holy oh, cow that was the best one I ever had that was delicious so right now Bluefin you are way up here on, on my list it yeah, was yeah. so good yeah 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 Bluefin and uh, that burger the burgers were about $14-15 a piece yeah. 
I drank sweet tea. She drinks water. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you're talking a $40 lunch plus yeah. your tip. Plus your tip. Yep. It's time for our word jumble. Lots of you played last week and you did pretty good. The answer was, please subscribe. And, you know, we got some people that let us know that they knew without telling the actual answer, which was awesome. You know, we have to come up with something that you might know, but yeah. it won't be too easy. Yeah. But if you're not from the villages, it might be impossible. Might. You might have to do some research. Yeah. But today's clue is, at one time, they were common at the village's borders. Thank you all so much for playing. We have fun making it, and uh, hopefully you have fun doing it. Time for Sweet and Salty. This is from Scott. Scott says, we need more hurricanes to run all the unwanted snowbirds back up north. Oh, no. I don't, I think that's, that's that not was, very nice. That's rude. That is rude. Rude. Uh, first of all, the snowbirds are wanted. Your your taxes would be higher. Your amenity fee would certainly be higher if they didn't live here. So, uh, you know, a little gratitude, Scott. And some of our best friends are snowbirds. We, lots of our friends. Actually, we'd, lots, we'd love lots, for lots. them all to be frogs and live here year-round. Yeah, we would. But, uh, we would. You know, I, I get what you're saying. You don't like the traffic. You don't like yeah. to, to have to wait later to eat supper, maybe. Or, or get, is it or dinner? Get, or get a tea time. <laughs> or get a tea time. Yeah, 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 yeah. And the sweet. This is from Connie Wind. I watch your show every night. It's very comforting, even if I have seen the show before. You are so kind and very sweet together. Thanks for always making my day and end on a happy note. Well, that's very sweet, Connie. I appreciate that. Uh, we try to be sweet to each other. <laughs> Well, I mean, you know, you know, she's the sweet one. I'm more of the practical one. I've, I've kind of got a more of a focus, you know, on what needs to be done. But she always keeps me, yeah. keeps me in line, especially my driving. Practical. <laughs> we got cut off yesterday, big time. I mean, big time. Do you remember that? Oh my goodness. Uh, yeah, there's some horn honking. <laughs> I have a dash cam. I want you to look at this. This is why you must be careful in a roundabout. We're just doing our thing, just perfect, and, and we're minding the rules, and look at it. Holy cow, that was a close one. Uh, please use your blinkers. I was driving today, this morning, and people are not using their blinkers to change lanes, and uh, I, it was getting pretty uh, scary because somebody's cutting right in front of me. I'm going, oh my goodness, please use the blinkers. Well, and make sure, you know, it's that time of year when sometimes your blinker fluid can run out, get your blinker fluid uh, renewed. There's such a thing as a blink of fluid. No, it's a joke. <laughs> it's an old joke, right? It's time for a movie review. This week we saw the movie Ordinary Angels. Something about that little girl without a mom. Sick. I think I'm supposed to help. I like angel movies. I do too. They're, you know, it's always a positive thing. Yes, of course. Um, and in this movie, it's even more special for us because it was yeah. it was built around our old Stump stomping grounds, mm -hmm. yeah. Louisville, Kentucky. Right. And uh, we we have been to Louisville a thousand times, a million times. Yeah. You know, and and we worked over there at the Louisville Bat Factory, yeah. and uh, we recognized the places and whatnot. But I haven't told you this. That film was that that movie was actually filmed in Canada. No. Yeah. <laughs> I knew it right right in the, at the beginning something was wrong because this funeral was at Southeast Christian Church. Yes. We know that church very well. Yes. It's a new church. Yeah. But when they went in Southeast Christian Church, it was a big old blocky or a brick uh, yeah. church, a hundred years old. So, yeah. So I knew yeah. right then. Yeah. Something was up. They did mention some highways and some roads. Oh that yeah, they tried to. And, yeah, so they tried to be real with all their signs and yes, the streets. Yes, yes. 
Okay, but, the star of that movie is Hilary Swank. Mm -hmm. Hilary Swank is an award-winning uh, actress. She's mm -hmm. quite yeah. famous and yeah, uh, popular, and I think yeah. she's a great actress. It was, she was great. And she co-starred with uh, Alan Richardson. Yeah. You might know him more from the new TV series, Reacher. Yeah. In fact, we sometimes people confuse he and I. Is it Jack Reacher? Yeah, Jack Reacher is the name of his TV show. Uh, but it's just called Reacher. Okay. But that's a series of books. I've read a lot of those books. All right. They star together. She is a hairdresser. Right. And she's got a drinking problem. And I'm not going to give any spoilers away, but in the end, she has gotten her life together by getting their life together. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of a tearjerker slash happy ending yeah. kind of movie. Yeah. Or is it? Maybe it's a happy ending. I don't want to be a spoiler. <laughs> It was a good movie. We yeah, pretty good we movie. Rated it. PG. Yeah. The only reason it's PG is somebody uh, spits up some blood. Oh, so really? So there's a little bit of blood in the movie, but yeah. no, no no big deal. No. We liked it, and yeah. uh, we, we do recommend it. Thumbs up. <laughs> One thing I don't recommend, though, is the concession stand has different items for sale, but no price is posted. You will find out the price when they check you out. Don't you all always like to know the price uh, before yeah. you buy something? Uh, yeah. Because you buy popcorn and a Coke at a movie theater. It's not cheap. Uh, uh. It's time for those shout outs. Those are some great people scrolling up there. Yes, and, they are. Uh, we're proud to know every single one of you. Thank you for your kindness. This is Ed and Sandy. They're fellow Hoosiers from Middlebury, Indiana. They were here on a day visit, and they bumped into us in Brownwood. Nice folks. Yeah. This is Arlene. We met her on her birthday at Blue Finn and her mother, and they're from Massachusetts. Really enjoyed themselves in the villages. Yeah, her husband Mick came out and met us, and he said, yeah. Hey, would you surprise my wife? And he's got these gigantic rings on from the, <laughs> from the Boston Red Sox. Yeah. Of course, he's not like Tom Brady. He's only got a couple. Because it's the Boston Red Sox. Yeah. But uh, he's a fan. He's a super fan super of the fan. Red Sox. So That's we right. went and, and talked to them. And yeah. It was super fun. Nice. Yeah. This is Tyler and Brandon. They're standing in front of that awesome sign at the sales center. They just closed on their new home in Middleton. Congratulations to you both. Well, Donna and Alan are coming for their fourth visit to the Villages in May. And they were Hoosiers like us, too. They'll, they'll be about two more years till they can retire and move to the Villages. Yeah, they are, are really good viewers, and we've heard from them on many occasions. And, and we're happy that you're coming back. Yeah. This is Sherry and Jim Rogers. They're from Massachusetts, and they're enjoying their new home in Lake Denham. She's a real estate agent, and they love their new life in the villages. Well, this is Brenda and her son. She's one of the most faithful viewers, and we ran into her at the Sharon for the performance last month. Yeah, she's a, a very good viewer as well. And always like to meet you guys. Mm -hmm. Unless you have anything else, that's going to do it for this week's edition of... Be sure to hit that little bell. We'll notify you every time we have a new video coming out. And remember, as we close out here, you're going to see a little icon. And if you click that, you'll see Rodney and Jackie, and they'll tell you all about Camp Villages. If you haven't done it yet, please subscribe to our channel and follow us on Facebook. Until next time. See you when you get here.